Hello, uh, my name is uh, Jeff Goldblum, G-O-L-D-B-L-U-M, and uh, and this is my my life from A to Z. What I'd like to tell you, if this is of any interest, is you've caught me at a moment when we're talking about Jurassic World Dominion. It's about to come out. This is 2022 as I sit here, and it's about to come out this June 10th, and we're hoping that people come out to the theaters. I was thinking, I haven't told told you this, um, but I was thinking, all you EW uh, types, um, about all the movies that I saw when I was a kid that made such a big impression on me in movie theaters. There are two cat, and I've written them down. I've been thinking about them for the last, you know, few weeks, and they've I've gone on a tremendous nostalgic adventure. And my sister has helped me because we saw movies together. My younger sister Pam and my parents used to drop us off at the Leona Theater every couple of weeks. It would carry a new movie. It was a grand movie palace, and we would see first-run movies of some things that I'm going to tell you about. These may be I'm I'm quite elderly, so these may be from a an era that you don't know, and some of these may be fringe offerings, but some of you might be interested to hear what they are, and I've broken them down into A, B, C, D, E, so I'm going to tell you some of the A's uh, and some of the B's and some of the C's. So are you are you ready? These are the movies. So th- some of them are the, are the movies that Pam and I saw, and then some of them are, are ones that the whole family went to together. Listen to this list. Now I'm going to get to them because we don't have all that much time, and there are a bunch of, you see, there are a bunch of movies. Okay, I'm going to tell you several A's. Uh, so A is for Absent-Minded Professor. I don't know if you know it. It's a Disney movie, and Fred McMurray played, you know, the professor who, you know, blew, blew his uh, laboratory up and uh, discovered Flubber, which allowed his car to fly. It made a big impression on me, and uh, that was fantastic. Also, Around the World in 80 Days, and The Apartment, and After the Fox. That's what's A for. B, B is for the Boston Strangler. You know who played the Boston Strangler? Tony Curtis. And we saw that. Also, Bridge on the River Kwai. Uh, that's about. Also, The Birds. Okay, I'm not going to mention any more. That's enough of that. Also, Ben Hur. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, also, Billy Budd. Never mind. Okay, C is for Ah, Come Fly With Me. Lois Nettleton and Carl Malden. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the Frank Sinatra recording of Come Fly With Me, Come Take My Hand. Cleopatra, by the way. She is also for Cleopatra with my friend Elizabeth Taylor, whom I got to meet later in life, believe it or not. I'll save that story for another time. D, D is for Diary of a Madman. That was with Vincent Price. And Vincent Price made a big impression on me and my sister. Ooh, he was, he was scary. E is for... Elvira Madigan. Most of you won't know what that is. I think it's a Swedish, maybe Scandinavian movie. Haven't seen it since then. It was too adult, really, for me to see at the time. It was a kind of mm, arty movie. My parents had a taste for arty art films. And so we saw Elvira Madigan. How about that? F is for, oh, my mother took us to see in an afternoon, Father Goose. Leslie Caron and one of Cary Grant's last movies. Uh, very interesting. Also, we saw Funny Girl as a, uh, a family, Barbara Streisand, whom I came to know later a little bit. Believe it or not, um, that was uh, F. Also, F is for The Fly. We saw The Fly, speaking of uh, Vincent Price, and uh, I had some association with uh, a remake of The The Fly with the great David Cronenberg. G is for The Graduate. We saw that toward the end of my stint as a a child in Pittsburgh. Very important movie for many people in 1960, I think eight or nine or something. Mike Nichols, Dustin Hoffman, Catherine Ross. Oh my gosh, and Anne Bancroft. You know what else we saw? G is also for Georgie Girl. Hey there, Georgie Girl. Right out of the street, come fancy free with Lynn Redgrave, whom I went on to work with also. Lynn Redgrave. Also, G is for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. We saw that as, as a, a family, and it was an important movie at the time. And Sidney Poitier, whom I'd also seen in Lilies of the Field and Patch of Blue, what a wonderful actor he was. And uh, and Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, what an important, uh, interesting movie I think that was. H is for, oh my gosh, you know what we saw as a family? HUD. 
with Paul Newman. Hey, you know, I met Paul Newman, believe it or not, just to tell another, you know, name dropping story. I met him at Robert Altman's office in Westwood. He had done a Buffalo Bill and the Indians after I had done uh, California Split and Nashville. Also on this list is Cool Hand Luke. If I don't get to it, I think we already passed C's, but I love that movie. And I love the score by Lalo Schifrin. You know what I stands for? The Incredible Mr. Limpet. You won't know what that is. Some people may. Jim Carrey, I think, with whom I worked on what movie? Earth Girls Are Easy. I uh, was going to remake that, I, th I think. It was with Don Knotts, and he played a guy who was uh, interested in fish, and, he, and then he saw a fish, and he fell in love with a, a fish, and he became a fish. He dove into the water, and he became a fish, and part of it was, most of it was animated. But I'd love Don Knotts from every day seeing um, The Andy Griffith Show. And now, can you imagine I'm working with Ron Howard, Opie's daughter, Bryce Dallas Howard. I'm getting... Goosebumps. There are, there are connections within connections as the snake eats its own tail. That's I. <laughs> I is also for, I was a teenage Frankenstein. My sister and I both saw that. It was scary. And I said to my sister, I was feeling protective, like we might be when we show our kids this uh, movie upcoming, because uh, dinosaurs can be scary if you're too young. But I said to my sister, hey, I've seen this movie already, which I did. Be careful. When that Frankenstein comes out of like the, you know, the drawer in the morgue, you're going to get, you're going to jump. So watch out. Here it comes. Here it comes. Ah! And then I jumped. Jumped. I couldn't help. It was uh, like that. That's I. J stands for Jason and the Argonauts. Love that movie. That was fantastic. Ray Harryhausen, of course, you know, some of you know, did the stop motion animation. And that's when they brought dinosaurs and creatures and fantasy creatures to life with stop motion animation, which I loved. I have a particular affection for it, even though Dennis Muir and we've, I've been in these movies which have advanced the technology. But I've worked with uh, Wes Anderson, the great Wes Anderson, and he, of course, did Isle of Dogs that I do a voice in and Fantastic Mr. Fox. And even in uh, Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, he employed some naive and vintage uh, technology of stop motion. I love it very much. Jason and the Argonauts. We're at K. King Kong versus Godzilla. Not, you know, unrelated entirely to these Jurassic Park movies. I was so excited to see that movie, and the entire neighborhood was, and it, it filled the entire three balconies of this Leona Theater, and you could not hear any of the movie because the kids were screaming and throwing popcorn boxes around. It was very, very exciting. King Kong vs. Godzilla. L. Ooh, well, The Last Picture Show. Our, our uh, parents took us to see The Last Picture Show, and then I came to know Peter Bogdanovich, who directed that, uh, and then I made a movie with Sybil Shepard. Believe it or not, I had a little part in one of her movies uh, later when I went to, to uh, Hollywood in the mid-70s. How about that? Oh, but that, what a lovely movie that is, Jeff Bridges, early on. And Cloris Leachman was in that movie, and Cloris Leachman played my mother when I did a movie about Ernie Kovacs. She played my Hungarian mother. So how about that? M. Our family went to see My Fair Lady. That's a heck of a movie. I, re I remember that. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, um, Emily, who's 30 years younger than I am, but uh, I think we're well matched because I'm very immature in many ways. I said to her, but we may have different cultural references, and she's a very brilliant woman, but I said to her, which Beatle would I be if I was one of the Beatles? She said, Rex Harrison. I said, possibly you mean George Harris? George Harrison? She said, oh yeah, 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 George, George. I said, yeah, that's totally understandable. I think we, we saw My Fair Lady this last week and you were thinking about Rex Harrison. She said, yeah, that's it. N stands for the Nutty Professor, the one with Jerry Lupus or Loomis. No, it's Jerry Lewis. And he used to be partnered with Dean Martin. I saw all those movies when they came out. You know, The Disorderly Orderly and Visit to a Small Pound, Geisha Boy, Delicate Delinquent, all the, the Bell Boy. Well, you know, those were big for me and he had a big impression on me and then I was gonna play his son in the last movie he ever did called Max Rose and I went to Las Vegas in order to bond with him and see if we could be father and son and and uh, I had a lovely two-hour meeting with him in his office uh, that I'll tell you about uh, in detail on another at another time but it was fantastic how about that Jerry Jerry Lewis oh is for The Odd Couple, which is very uh, interesting. I did a Neil Simon play at, uh, on the West End, and I, uh, Prisoner of Second Avenue, Prisoner of Second Avenue. 
Uh, so, you know, I have a connection with uh, Neil Simon a little, little bit, but we also saw a movie called Always for On the Double. On the Double, my mom took us to see in the afternoon downtown Pittsburgh in big theater, and it's Danny Kay. And she, I'd never seen her laugh so hard and made a big impression on me. And Danny Kay had made an album called uh, Mommy, Give Me a Drink of Water that they played for us when we were kids. I loved it and I've since played it for our kids. We've got a five-year-old and, and a seven-year-old and they, it's a, it chokes me up. That song particularly, Mommy, give me a drink of water, give me a cookie too. It's just great. There are a bunch of great songs. He was wonderful. Danny Kay, I wish I'd met him. P is for the Pink Panther. We saw that when it first came out. This is uh, when Peter Sellers first introduced himself as Inspector Clouseau. <gasps> and that Henry Mancini opening started the movie. We were there. I saw it when it first came out. <laughs> and Clouseau, fantastic. I remember that day. We saw that. That was something. And then P is also for Psycho. I remember when my friend Bobby D and I went to the Leona Theater, just ourselves. That's one of the first ones. I went with a friend, not my family, and we went down, we walked down to the Leona and saw Psycho when it came out, what is it, 64 maybe or something. Spectacular. And then I just spent time in CinemaCon with Jamie Lee Curtis, who's the daughter, of course, of Janet Lee, and uh, we talked about it a little bit. Psycho. Let me see, is there any movie in my life that I can say starts with Q or The Quiet Man? Hey, I saw later, and I think it was from around this period, the John Wayne, who's who's his lead actress, uh, a wonderful actress. You'll, you'll think I'm an idiot for not knowing. It'll come to me, but hey, that's something. And you keep seeing scenes of The Quiet Man. He's Irish, and he's got a, uh, an uncharacteristic, he's not wearing a cowboy hat, he's wearing some kind of cap, and he's got a, and he comes in the door, and the wind is got blowing in his, in his uh, overcoat, his trench coat is blowing, and he it's, and he gets her, and and, he, and they go into some passionate kiss. It's great. Yeah, that's the quiet, quiet man. Yeah, John Wayne. R stands for the Rat Race. You may not know this movie, and I have not. I looked it up recently. It exists. I didn't dream it. Our family was taking a vacation, I think, in uh, I'll bet it was Atlantic City because that's where we used to vacation. And um, there was a movie with Tony Curtis, uh, who's the father of Jamie Lee Curtis. We talked about him a little bit the other day, and uh, we went in to see The Rat Race. I remember that day. It made an impression on me going to the movie theater. Gee, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, S stands for The Sterile Cuckoo. The Sterile Cuckoo is a movie with Eliza Minnelli. I think it was her first movie. We all went to see it. And um, she plays a kind of glasses wearing, kind of you know, gawky girl. And I think she comes into her own in some way. I haven't seen it or heard, heard, heard of it since then, but The Sterile Cuckoo, a romantic, romantic little um, coming of age picture. How about that? Uh, and then it also stands for Shadows. Uh, for you art uh, and independent cinema lovers, uh, is one of the first, maybe the first movie by John Cassavetes, uh, or Faces was, anyway, Shadows of Faces. And uh, my parents were into that kind of theater. And we, when I was 15 or 14 or whenever it came out, saw Shadows and Faces and Minnie and Moskowitz, uh, these John Cassavetes movies. Uh, very important. I've, I've had a, my own love affair and, uh, and um, ability to participate in some independent movies of the same, of a similar kind, you know, down and dirty, improvised, uh, personal movies uh, that I had a creative uh, yen for. Uh, but I'll bet that set me up, you know, their, their impact on me. Also, S stands for Splendor in the Grass. We saw a Warren Beatty movie with Natalie Wood, I believe, at Radio City Music Hall. I, I then went to live in New York right after high school and uh, was there. But and so Radio City Music Hall, we went there. We saw the Rockettes, I think, do a show, and they showed this movie. Big, big screen, I remember, uh, and it made an impression. I was then to have many interesting experiences in the cinema with Warren Beatty, and then I came to know him a little bit and spent some time with him and his and our pal Gary Shandling. Three of us were, were strolling around Sunset Boulevard, Sunset Plaza, one afternoon, and I remember memorably. T stands for That Cold Day in the Park, the first movie, I believe, of Robert Altman. I was gonna later do, didn't know it then when I saw it in Pittsburgh, but I would later do uh, three, four movies with him. Very important director for everybody, certainly for me. We did Nashville, we did, uh, I was in California Split, 
a very interesting. Uh, Sandy Dennis was in that cold day in the park. Uh, really, really interesting. Uh, also, Top Cappy, uh, Peter Ustinov was in it, and um, my dad looked like Peter Ustinov and always had an affection for him because he was like, hey, that's my doppelganger in movies. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So there we go. Uh, T stands for the time machine. Uh, Yvette Mimiu and Rod Taylor, who was in The Birds, which is one of the movies I also saw. But um, the time machine is when, uh, you know, they went back and Yvette Mimiu, who was in Where the Boys Are, was Wiener and all knowledge had disappeared. They weren't interested in books anymore. They turned into dust, and all they could say is they wore pastel things, uh, togas, and Rod Taylor from our time, who was very academic and interested in learning, said, what's your name? She went, Wiena. Oh, okay, he said, my name's da-da-da-da, and then they go through this thing. How about that? You, uh-oh, well, under the Yum Yum Tree, my sister went and saw it. It was one of the, I think, lesser movies of uh, the great Jack Lemmon. But I remember it. He was, uh, Carol Lindley, I think, was in it, and Dean Jones. And he was in it, kind of a, mm, you know, uh, a, a frisky manager of a building, uh, of an apartment building in... Uh, Los Angeles, I'll bet. Under the Yum Yum Tree, that's a good one. V, V stands for Vertigo. We saw the first run of Vertigo, and I tell you, that's Paul Schrader's favorite Hitchcock movie, and I love it. And I love the Bernard Herrmann score, and uh, James Stewart in that, and Kim Novak, just fantastic. Henry Jones is in it. You may know in that one scene where there's a judge presiding over the hearing of this cop who'd kind of, uh, you know, done something worth investigating. And Henry Jones had a daughter named Jocelyn Jones, with whom I went to acting school in 1970 at the Neighborhood Playhouse. We both studied with Sanford Meisner. W stands for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Mike Nichols. First movie, I just read a biography, which I recommend, about Mike Nichols. And he, after having big success on stage, and in Second City in Chicago, I think, and with Elaine May, uh, directed Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton and George Siegel, whom I came to know because I did a movie with him early on uh, in my career called California Split with Robert Altman and Sandy Dennis, whom I've mentioned before. They were in this movie. It's a very adult piece of material, which I still am not sure I understand, but I've seen several versions of it on stage uh, since, but we, I saw that when I was a young teenager. That was something. Uh, that was something, made a big impression on me. X, well, now you got me. I have nothing on this list, the list that I remember from seeing. So X stands for, yeah, Xanadu, I think. Wasn't that that movie with, um, let's get physical, physical, Olivia Newton-John, and I think they were, that's not the one they were skating, is it? And I think that came out the, the same, around the same time, maybe the same year as the movie I did, Thank God It's Friday when the disco and disco, roller disco craze were happening. So I feel uh, some, some connection with that. I can't say that I saw it, but um, why is for yesterday? Written and directed by Richard Curtis, who wrote, whose first script was The Tall Guy. Uh, that I did with Emma Thompson. It was her first movie, and now I've been spending time with Richard Curtis. He's wonderful. He went on to write Notting Hill and Four Weddings and a Funeral, and then direct Love Actually, and many other wonderful things. He's a great, great man who raises billions of dollars for uh, Red Nose Day, helps children in need all over the world, and he's a great friend and a wonderful guy. And finally, Z. And I tell you, I don't think I have a Z here either, but we could make one up because I think a Z movie, well, there's a movie called Z, I think by who directed the Battle of Algiers? Costa Gavras. Costa Gavras, yes, of course, uh, did that. And so he directed a movie called Z. I, I think I saw it when it came out, but I'll bet I was already in New York because I'll bet it came out in the early 70s. Uh, and now I have to see it again. But I think he's an important uh, director, Costa Gavras. Anyway, I think I've discharged my obligation. I think uh, on that assignment, I get an A minus because nobody's perfect. Uh, which is the last line in what movie? Some Like It Hot, which I might have seen when it came out. Uh, S is for Some Like It Hot. And I just last night saw finish the Marilyn Monroe documentary. Uh, she's great, and we talked about Tony Curtis already, and we talked about Jack Lemmon. 
So there we go. Jeff Goldblum, uh, all you EW lovers, uh, uh, talking about my life in early movies from A to Z, as my wife would say, but I, I go, what? It's Z, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs>